wondering how to use the redstone repeater, this video is going to explain the five different uses for a redstone repeater in Minecraft. If you enjoy this video, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to see when new videos come out. Let's start with the crafting recipe for a redstone repeater. It is two redstone torches, one redstone dust, and three stone crafts a redstone repeater. A redstone repeater can be mined with any tool or by hand and it will drop itself. It'll also drop if the block it is attached to is moved, removed, or destroyed. In Java Edition, if the water flows over it, it'll drop, or if lava flows on the repeater, it will be destroyed. Lastly, if a piston pushes a block into the space of the repeater, it will drop the repeater. The redstone repeater can be placed on solid opaque blocks. When placed, the input will be facing you, and the output will be facing away. There is an arrow showing the direction the repeater is facing, but it is hard to see. There are two torches on the repeater. The one that is towards one side is on the front, and the other torch will move depending on the delay it is set. The color of the torches shows whether it is on, bright red, or off, dark brown. There are five different ways to use the repeater. The first one is signal transmission. This is when the redstone signal travels from the back of the repeater to the front of the repeater, so just through it. How you can power the redstone repeater is with an active power component, like a block of redstone, button, daylight sensor, detector rail, lever, observer, pressure plate, redstone torch, target, trap chest, tripwire hook, and weighted pressure plate. It can also be powered by powered redstone dust, and a redstone comparator is going into the input or the back of the redstone repeater. Plus, a powered opaque block can power the redstone repeater. With powered opaque blocks, there are two types strongly powered and weakly powered. Strongly powered is powered by power components, redstone comparator, or a redstone repeater. Strongly powered can give a redstone signal to any adjacent block to the opaque block. In contrast, weakly powered is powered by redstone dust. When a block is weakly powered, it cannot power adjacent redstone dust, but can power power components or devices like in this case the redstone repeater that are adjacent. Lastly, the redstone repeater can power any mechanism component it is facing, like activator rails, a bell, dispenser, door, dragon head, dropper, fence gate, hopper, note block, piston, powered rail, activator rail, redstone lamp, TNT, and a trap door. The next use for a repeater is signal repeating. With a redstone signal, the highest level it can reach is 15. A repeater will boost a redstone signal back up to a redstone signal of 15. For example, if a signal going into the repeater is 1, the repeater will output a signal of 15. With a redstone signal, it loses 1 strength each block it travels. A redstone repeater can be useful for increasing the length of a redstone signal can travel. Also, placing an opaque block before and after the redstone repeater will allow you to get 2 extra blocks as distance. When an opaque block is powered, the redstone signal travels through the block without decreasing in strength. So using opaque blocks before and after the repeaters can reduce the amount of redstone dust and repeaters you have to use. Lastly, if you use a redstone repeater to boost a signal up to 15, there will be a 1 redstone tick delay, which is about 0.1 seconds. If you use 4 redstone repeaters, the delay will be 0.4 seconds. The next use of the redstone repeater is signal delaying. As just discussed, a redstone repeater has a delay of 0.1 seconds or 1 redstone tick. You can increase the delay of the redstone signal up to 4 redstone ticks or 0.4 seconds. You can modify the delay by right clicking or hitting the use control on the redstone repeater. This will increase the signal up to 4 then reset it back to 1. If you want to increase the delay of the redstone signal further than this, you can place multiple redstone repeaters in a row. When you increase the delay of the redstone signal, it will increase the length of shorter on pulse length to match the length of the repeater's delay, and it will also suppress any shorter off pulse. On pulse means when a redstone signal turns on and off again. Off pulse is the opposite, so when a signal turns off and on again. A pulse length is how long it will last, or how the redstone signal transmitted through it. 
For example, if you set a repeater for a 3 redstone tick delay, if the on pulse is 1 or 2 ticks, it will turn into a 3 tick pulse length and the same will happen if it is off pulse. An example of this is when you place multiple repeaters in a row, you can see the redstone signal move through the repeaters even if the pulse isn't that long. Or you can compare when using redstone dust versus a redstone repeater. The redstone dust will quickly turn off as where the repeaters filter through before turning off. The next use of the redstone repeater is signal direction. What this means is because the redstone repeater doesn't output a signal from its sides, the signal travels through it from the back to the front. Therefore, you could have two lines of repeaters next to each other and one won't affect the other redstone signal. In contrast with redstone dust, you can't place it next to each other because they will connect to each other. Signal direction is useful because it protects redstone circuits from the redstone signal feeding back into the circuit or you can separate parts of the circuit from each other. The last use of the redstone repeater is signal locking. With repeaters, if you place a repeater going into the side of another repeater, this allows you to lock the signal of the repeater. The repeater that can be locked will have a grayish row across the repeater instead of the torch, showing that you can lock it. What this means is when you power the redstone repeater going into the side of the other repeater, this can lock the other redstone repeater. When the redstone repeater is locked, it will not change the output if it is powered or unpowered, even if you change the input. Once the side repeater is turned off, the other repeater will no longer be locked and return to how it normally functions. Redstone comparators going into the side of a redstone repeater can also be used to lock that redstone repeater. This provides additional possibilities as the redstone comparator can maintain signal strength, compare signal, subtract signal, and measure block state. If you want to know more about the redstone comparator, I'll have a card on the top right.